cute little turtle here is Elon the Musk turtle. And if I had bought him in a pet store, it would have been an illegal turtle sale. What is up guys? It is the turtle girl. Welcome to the channel or welcome back to the channel. Yeah, there is actually a reason you can no longer find baby turtles in most commercial chain pet stores or things of the sort. If you have been in the market for a pet turtle and you wanted a hatchling, you might have noticed that it's really difficult to find small turtles for sale. The reason for this is the FDA's ban on the sale of turtles under four inches of shell length. Now, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, let me catch you up real quick. So in the 1960s and 70s, lots of people were buying baby turtles. Why? Well, because pretty much anywhere you went, on the side of the road, in pet stores, everywhere, you could buy little hatchling red-eared sliders, these cute little green turtles about the size of a half dollar. They were super duper cheap. And so because they were so easy to get a hold of, of course, naturally, people were buying them. They're this really cute, cheap animal. Parents would just buy them for their kids and put them in these little plastic bowls with a little palm tree coming out. And then that would be the kid's pet until they, I don't know, got bored of it or released it, which are two whole other topics, the little bowl and releasing turtles. But around this time, there was also a rise in salmonella outbreaks and the FDA put two and two together and said, well, reptiles and turtles carry germs and salmonella and there are lots of baby turtles being sold. Plus the main demographic getting these baby turtles are young children. But when you're mixing animals that can carry germs with children, it's just not the greatest idea. And kids being kids will take that turtle, kiss it, put it in their mouth, not wash their hands. And so that must be where all the salmonella is coming from. And so they decided the quickest solution to reduce the salmonella outbreaks would be to reduce the amount of baby turtle sales. And so in 1975, they enacted the four inch law. Now let me read you what this law says. This is from the Code of Federal Regulations, Title 21, Volume 8, Section 1240.62, Turtles Interstate and Interstate Requirements. Sales, general prohibition. Except as otherwise provided in this section, viable turtle eggs and live turtles with a carapace length of less than four inches shall not be sold, held for sale, or offered for any other type of commercial or public distribution. And so the sale of turtles under four inches was basically banned in the hopes that it would reduce the amount of turtles being sold to people and turtles that would actually be small enough to fit in children's mouths, things of that nature. So gradually hatchling turtles began kind of not disappearing from the pet trade, but you just couldn't find them in pet stores or other places as readily. Now there are actually a couple of exceptions to this rule. The two main ones being turtles sold for scientific, educational, and exhibitional purposes. And also the sale of smaller turtles that are not in conjunction Conjunction with a business. And so through these loopholes, you're still able to find people who sell hatchling turtles. You just can't find them as easily in the pet store anymore. Now, 50 years later in 2022, I think the four inch law was pretty effective in reducing the sale of hatchling turtles. You can rarely find them in pet stores these days. You have to look either online or go to some reptile shows to find small breeders where you can actually purchase a hatchling turtle to raise. And this just kind of brings up some interesting discussion, which is why I wanted to make a video about it. Now there's a couple of different camps that people fall into uh, when talking about the four inch law and the ban on sale of turtles under four inches. The biggest camp is the people who don't actually know this law exists and we're just unaware of it. So now you're aware of it, so you're not in that camp anymore. But the other two camps are those that are kind of in favor of it and think it was a wise thing to do. There are others who think it should be changed because it's not really relevant anymore. And so to that, I would just like to say the main reason the four inch law came about was to prevent the spread of salmonella, which is a, a good cause, I think. However, I will say that this is a lot less of an issue as it was back then. I would say that most people know that it's possible for turtles to carry salmonella, but you can drastically reduce the chances of contracting it if you are just washing your hands, not putting your turtle in your mouth, all those common sense things. If you look at the CDC website, you can actually see some information on recent salmonella outbreaks. And first, let me tell you, the majority of them have nothing to do with turtles. It's mostly improperly cooked or handled food. As far as the outbreaks that have been investigated, there were two recent ones that I could find. There was one in 2019 where 26 people were infected with salmonella. If you're comparing that with the entire population of the United States, I'm sure it's like you're more likely to get struck by lightning than catch salmonella from a turtle based on that. In 2020, there was another outbreak where 35 people were infected with salmonella. I'll link all of this in the description below. But again, if you read these studies, the majority of people who contracted it 
were actually children. In 2007 and 2008, there was another article I found where about 100 people were infected with salmonella, and it said in that investigation that the median age of people contracting it was seven years old. So the people with confirmed cases of salmonella from pet turtles obviously tend to be on the younger side of the spectrum. So I'm just putting that data out for you. You can make your own conclusions, but really I think the salmonella thing is just easily avoidable with good hygiene. I also think the four inch law kind of reduces the amount of impulse purchases that people have with baby turtles because like I said, they're super cute, they look small, and if it's easy for people to get them, more people are gonna get them. And so I think that the four inch law was good in that it reduced like the amount of red eared sliders that are in the market where people will buy them when they're small and then when they get outgrown, they are also released. So that's another aspect to think about it. But then the drawback on the other hand is that there are some turtles that don't even reach four inches, like musk turtles that don't even get big enough past the four inch law so they can't even technically legally be sold. So it can be difficult for hobbyists to get a hold of these species because they can't be sold by any kind of commercial pet store or business. In addition, I think it has also just reduced the amount of people that are actually in the turtle keeping hobby and experiencing these wonderful animals. I guess I'm kind of in the camp of that if you really wanted a turtle and researched it, you would be able to find a hatchling turtle if you wanted a younger one. The four inch law just makes it a lot more difficult. Should it be changed? I don't know, leave your thoughts in the comments down below. I will say those two exceptions to the rule, the sale of turtles for scientific and educational purposes, and also the sale of turtles not in conjunction with a business are major loopholes that a lot of people are able to use to still be able to sell baby turtles. But as a whole, the four inch law has really reduced the amount of baby turtles that are being sold. And as such, I think has affected the amount of people in the turtle keeping hobby. Has it done its job of reducing salmonella? Maybe. Or maybe that correlation really wasn't even that big in the first place. I don't know, who am I to say? But basically, I just wanted to give you the information so that you are aware of this and can formulate your own opinion. I honestly don't know if it's something that needs to be changed. When I first got into the hobby, I kind of had that opinion that it was something kind of stupid. But now having been in the hobby and still seeing how many unwanted turtles there still are now that people get when they're small and when they grow up larger, maybe it is a good thing that people can't just walk into a pet store and see a cute baby turtle. So it's kind of like my two sides at war with, with each other. On one hand, I want more people to be able to experience keeping these animals and they can't fall in love with them if they don't ever see them in the pet store. But also, I want them to be well taken care of and so having the four inch law reduces the amount of people that just impulse purchase them, at least I think. And then I would guess I would just say the whole salmonella thing, which was the whole purpose that this law was enacted, it's kind of just a moot point. Just wash your hands, have good hygiene, and don't lick your turtle like a popsicle and you'll be just fine. But as far as the other impacts of this law, it just has some good things and it has some bad things. This whole video is really just to kind of open up a discussion about this. Please leave your thoughts in the comments down below. It's not really to say whether it's good or it's bad. It just is, and it is what it is. But I hope this video did help you to understand why it is so hard to find hatchling turtles in the store and how the four inch law came about. If you did enjoy the video, please hit the thumbs up down below, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you all next Friday. Have a turtly awesome day. Bye.